Hello everyone, it's the day after Christmas and we are back to cooking some plain old easy dinners. And the first one will be a white cheddar macaroni and cheese that I am just dicing up some sausage and adding into the pot with the mac and cheese just to make a one pot meal. I was really feeling kind of sick of cooking and just wanted something easy. I wasn't really feeling that well after Christmas. That kind of happens. You overdo it a little bit. And usually for me, it's related to food, just overindulging and that kind of thing. So I was um, trying to relax, take it easy. And this was just a really quick meal that I could put together really quickly and get back to my recliner, my heating pad. And all I did was I browned up that um, smoked sausage. And after I had boiled up the noodles for the mac and cheese, I just put it all in the same pot, opened up the pouches and just put it all in the pan and mixed it together. I just served this up with some corn on the side and that was our dinner for this night. It went together so quick and so easy. I believe it was less than 30 minutes to put this meal together. And after the whole week of Christmas and all that we had to do and all the cooking that we did on Christmas Day and the cleaning up and all that fun stuff, it was just nice to take a break and do a no-brainer meal where I didn't have to plan it out and I didn't have to spend hours on my feet and clean up afterward was just so simple. And this was also kid approved. Cameron did make the statement that basically I had made macaroni and cheese and hot dogs, but this is a more grown up version, I suppose. This boxed macaroni and cheese is the great value white cheddar and black pepper flavor. And of course I had to add more black pepper because it is my favorite. On Monday, it was our granddaughter's birthday, so I took her out to dinner at Denny's, and she wanted little brother to come along too, so the three of us are at Denny's, and we had birthday pancakes, of course, for them, and I had a patty melt and fries. Those birthdays that are right after Christmas can be tricky, but we had a really good time having dinner together. Tuesdays are my late night at work, so I like to make something that will keep for a while and we can all kind of eat on throughout the day, or it can be something that can be warmed up when I get out of work at 8 o'clock. And so on this day, I am making some good old spaghetti. To start, I'm just browning this ground beef with some minced garlic. I have a little pan on the side that I'm going to boil up some of these half-length spaghetti noodles and then I will just add that all into the same pot. The meat is all cooked up and I've added a jar of ragu pasta sauce to this. I just cannot buy $8 spaghetti sauce. I physically can't do it. My arms do not function like that. They will not put them into the cart. I always will use a cheaper brand of spaghetti sauce and just add my own garlic or seasonings to it if I want it to taste different. I just kind of don't feel like there's anything out there or not many things out there that taste better than what you can make homemade. And um, so just to be a little different this time because spaghetti is a meal that we make quite a bit and I just wanted to change it up just a little. So I added a jar of Alfredo sauce to this as well. And then I'm just going to transfer these noodles from the water pot into the sauce pot. And I don't mind if I get a little bit of that pasta water in there. I think that it adds a little something to your pasta if you do. But I did go ahead and drain the rest off and just put all of those noodles in the pot. 
Give it a good stir to get it all mixed together. And this will keep um, until I'm ready to come home for my lunch break and eat, which will be around dinner time. And I know that the guys have something planned for today. I can't remember what, but it'll be ready when they are finally home and ready to eat. I just added some Parmesan cheese on top just to give it a little extra something. And that is all. I always make enough spaghetti for an army and luckily I used a giant pan because it always seems to grow and grow. Well, we finally got snow here in Michigan, and I don't know about anybody else, but it makes me want to stay home, stay warm, and cook up some yummy food. On this night, I was making some sweet and sour country-style pork ribs in the oven. I just sprinkled some brown sugar on top of them after I put them in a 9x13 baking dish. This looks to be about a quarter of a cup or a third of a cup, I'm not really sure, but I just made um, made sure that every piece of meat had some brown sugar on it, and then I sprinkled on some soy sauce, and it's okay, you can mix this ahead of time or do it the way I did. I mean, this was just because I had worked and was like really trying to hurry and get dinner ready in a hurry and just didn't feel like doing it. I mean, sometimes after you get home from work, the last thing you want to do is cook a big complicated meal. But unfortunately, this is what we had to work with. And so I was making it work. And so I just poured the juice of the canned pineapple over the brown sugar mix to get it kind of um, all touching and I'm chopping up the chunks of pineapple. This is what my husband picked up at the store. I mean, typically I would use chunks or crushed and then um, I wouldn't have to do the work of chopping up the pineapple, but I'm not sure what was going on at the store. And you know, if you don't know, you don't know. So it works no problems there and then after I got it all chopped up and everything covered up with foil I just put it in the oven at 375 until that meat was cooked through it did take a couple of hours and I did turn them and toss them so that they got coated I have some broccoli and some butter in a pan just gonna get that sauteed I added a little bit of salt and then in the other pan I have some chicken flavored rice aroni and that is what we are going to have for dinner on this night. I'm just adding the water that's required to cook the rice aroni after I browned it in my pan in some butter for a couple of minutes. And then once I get that water mixed in, I added the two seasoning packets. I did make two boxes of rice aroni. Um, not sure why I did that. We didn't need two boxes, but oh well, we had leftovers. And then here is my steamed broccoli. I could have put it in with the... Um, pork ribs if I wanted to or if I had room but I did not have the room to do so so we just had that on the side and I'm just making my plate adding some of those pineapples and um this is a little spicy because I did put some crushed red pepper in ours we do like our food on the spicy side but if you don't like spicy then just leave out the crushed red pepper and so I just put that on top of that rice and that was dinner for that night And the next night, Bill cooked up some ribeye steaks in the cast iron skillet, and he made some salads for him and the boys. I cannot eat salad, but I did enjoy having a baked potato with mine, and this was so delicious. I always love it when he cooks for me and gives me a break from cooking. On New Year's Eve, Bill made up some chili dogs and some tater tots. We just had a really simple, quick dinner before we went to the movies to see the new Spider-Man movie. And so these really did just hit the spot and they were super simple to make. 
and a quick dinner before going out. For New Year's Day, I made up some food for our lucky dinner. Um, we always have cabbage rolls for New Year's Day, and I decided to make a dip and some crackers just to have as kind of a lunch before we have our dinner. And um, the crazy thing is that we ended up being abandoned by our children <laughs> that day. So it was just Bill and I, and we had all of this food. But um, we made it work. We just kind of snacked on everything. We stayed up super late this day watching movies and just hanging out together. So here I am just making up the dip really quick so that it's available for everybody to snack on before um, or while I'm cooking up all the other food. And like I said, the boys ended up leaving to um, one went to work and one went with friends for the night. And so it did end up just being the two of us. So to start with, I just have a softened block of cream cheese and then I added some mayo to that because I had planned to make a big cheese ball and one of my cream cheeses was no good. It was had actually molded in my fridge. I guess it had been there a while and I didn't realize. So I decided to just make a dip with some mayo and cream cheese and then I added some garlic juice from the garlic, the minced garlic jar, because I did not have the powdered garlic powder. So then I added some um, diced ham that came in a package and some sharp cheddar cheese to that, as well as some chopped onion. And then I added some horseradish sauce at the end because I just felt like it needed a little extra zip to it. So it totally changed up this cheese ball um, dip that I was making because, as you know, horseradish has a little bit of a kick to it, but Bill really loved it. He said it was the best dip he ever had in his life and that I need to make it more often. I really liked it myself. Um, so if you're looking for a little bit of a twist on a cheese ball, this is a good one. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot and days of old lang syne? For old lang syne, my dear, for old lang syne. To go along with our cabbage rolls, I wanted to make some potato salad, but not everybody in our house likes potato salad, the traditional potato salad with the mustard and the mayo in it. So a lot of the times when I make potato salad at home, I will make it in a different way, which is called loaded potato salad, baked potato salad, sorry about that. So basically your sauce is, um, just some mayo and this time I added a package of ranch seasoning the dry stuff to that and so that is going to be my sauce I have some onion to throw in there also and we're going to use bacon and um, sharp cheddar cheese and our potatoes of course which I washed and peeled and boiled and cut up into bite-sized pieces and so I like to put my sauce mix in a bowl and mix it all up before I add my potatoes that way I know that I can have my dressing just the way I want it before I add my potatoes. Sometimes I find that by adding the potatoes and everything first and then adding the sauce that my potatoes get broken down or mashed up more or it doesn't get mixed as well. So this is just the way that I have found works best for me. And so my sauce was a little 
thick from the ranch dressing mix that I put in it. And so I added a little bit of milk just to thin it down and make sure that all of those potatoes are going to get coated really well. And then the one thing that I realized that I forgot was the boiled egg. And so I decided at this time I would throw a couple eggs on the stove, boil them up, and then just add them later. And then thinking, because Cameron doesn't like eggs at all, that it was probably best that it happened this way. And that I would just slice them up and put them on top. And that way he can kind of skip around the eggs and get his potato salad. But anyway, he ended up not being home, so it really didn't matter. And then that's just how it goes. Who knows? Sometimes life throws you curves and you don't really know who you're feeding. But I guess it's a good alternative if you know that some people don't like eggs in their potato salad just to add them on top, which is what I did. Normally when I make this potato salad, I use sour cream, not mayo, but it worked out. I didn't have any sour cream in with the ranch dressing. It just really didn't seem like it would matter to me whether it was mayo or sour cream. And it did turn out delicious. Either way would have been fine. <music> And here is the finished potato salad and it tastes just like a loaded baked potato. And the eggs finally made it to the party. Next I get to work on getting these cabbage rolls assembled. First I'm going to chop my head of cabbage in half and then work on getting that stem removed. And I'm just going to cut it right out of there. I'm just gonna look it over for any bad pieces and then I'm gonna pop it into a pan of boiling water just to steam it. And then when it's done um, boiling and getting those leaves all softened up, I'm going to rinse it with some cold water to cool them down and make them easier to handle so this cabbage will get well washed. I like to nestle my cabbage rolls into a bed of sauerkraut. So what I'm doing is using some, what I normally use as tomato sauce and sauerkraut or some diced tomatoes and sauerkraut in the bottom of the pan. But I had this Hunt's pasta sauce on hand and I thought this would be okay. It did give it a little different flavor that I didn't necessarily love. It was okay. And I would probably prefer to stick to my regular method, but it is what it is. It already happened and you can't go back. So going forward, next time I will just stick to my original recipe. And this was good too, just letting you know ahead of time. And so to my meat mixture, I am just adding some onion and some diced tomato, some minute rice and some crushed red pepper, some salt and some pepper. Now, some people, oh yeah, there goes some garlic. So some people will cook up their meat and their rice mixture in a separate pan, but I don't like to do that. I just like to save a step and I mix it all together and then I just form it into little balls and then wrap it into the cabbage and um, just cook the meat in the cabbage and everything all at one time. Now you want to make sure that you pay attention to your meat that you're using in the fat content. Otherwise, you will get really greasy cabbage rolls if you have a really high fat content in your ground beef. So just pay attention to that or not if you like um, that flavoring in your food. That's fine too. I know some people do. And all I'm doing is I'm taking my cabbage leaf and I'm going to hold it open in the palm of my hand like this and then just set some of the meat and tomato and rice mixture inside. I'm going to just fold it up into a little envelope 
and then start at the bottom and roll it as well as I can and this can be a little tricky and it is a little tedious and so you know there is a version of cabbage roll casserole where you just chop up your cabbage ahead of time and or you can use a bag of coleslaw and then mix it all together in a casserole sheet but because it's a special day I was just going through all the motions to make these rolled up cabbage rolls that represent money and good luck for the new year. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance now don't worry if you have broken or ripped pieces of cabbage you can always wrap another piece around or just kind of tuck in whatever it takes to get them rolled up like I did and if you need to you can double up a cup of kindness yet for days of And my trusty friend And just a hand of thine And after I get all these cabbage rolls assembled I just put a little scoop of the sauce over each one of them So that they can take a little bath in the oven In all of that nice flavorful tomato sauce and since I had a little bit of the rice and meat mixture left over, I'm just tucking it in around the edges. Didn't want to waste it. And I was um, out of leaves and out of the, um, well, you know, everybody was leaving us. And by this time I knew, so I didn't want to make more cabbage rolls. But I just wanted to use up the very last bit of that um, meat mixture and just threw it in there. I'm going to cover it with foil so that we can keep all of that good moisture inside and then I just throw it into the oven on 375 and you just cook it until the meat mixture cooks through. I think I put it in for an hour and that was because I was doing other things and we weren't quite in a hurry and this is what they look like after they were done and they were so Good. And it is only a once a year type of thing that I make on New Year's Day only. Should old acquaintance be forgot? And here I am just dishing up my cabbage roll or galumpki as some people call them. And it was really, really good. I just love the inside mixture along with the soft cabbage on the outside and a little bit of that sauerkraut that's on the bottom. So good to me. In just a perfect, no fuss, New Year's Day dinner. Thank you so much for watching and here's to a happy new year.